So today we're here with Klaus Hessler from Germany, uh, who has written some, you know, two really fine books. Uh, and in addition to being a very accomplished uh, player, he's a, a terrific uh, teacher and author. And uh, we'll have Klaus explain uh, the concepts in his two books, Open Handed Playing One and Two. And let's start, Klaus, maybe you can tell us a little bit about why you chose to write these books. Obviously, you saw a need in the market and uh, tell us about that. Sure. I mean, a, a lot of it uh, is actually connected with my own biography. So I should mention, I, I wrote these two books together with my friend and mentor, Dom Famularo. And uh, I, I should say, when I first started out playing drums as a kid at, at age of four, I was starting to play open-handed. I then, long story short, switched back to crossing hands on the drums. And, uh, and these two books actually represent my own journey back from crossed hands to playing open-handed. So it's all, say, better tested with me being the test person, if you will. So, uh, so it, was out of that, um, it, it was out of that need to write something for myself and then fine tune that in cooperation with Dom and what you have in hands finally is the book. So that's in a nutshell how we came along with that. So it's not just another drum book uh, that you say, oh, I, ca I can play any book open-handed. Actually not, because it actually offers you some additional sources and, and, and ideas that you will possibly not find in other drum books. So, you know, for people that might not be familiar with the term open-handed drumming or open-handed playing. Can you just give a quick demonstration? Sure. I mean, uh, first of all, in, in, this, in this first book, uh, uh, volume one, we have two different approaches, which is uh, what we ended up calling traditional approach, which is you play anything that you played before with hands crossed, but now open, but you use that extra freedom that you have. Say something like this. So let's say more or less uh, trying to, uh, to develop additional vocabulary and, and additional colors and making full use of what this instrument has to offer by not crossing hands. Since the crossing of hands, uh, I felt for myself would sort of limit me when I'm trying to express myself in the best possible way because certain things would not be, I would not be able to do certain things with hands crossed. So I'm not saying crossing hands is bad or old fashioned. It was just to say, um, I felt more potential in the open handed position, opening my hands as opposed to crossing them. That's pretty much long story short. So, um, I mean, do you need to, as a player, do you feel you need to switch completely to use the book to open-handed playing? Or do you like to, you know, kind of mix it up for what's most efficient, you know, for what you want to accomplish? Uh, personally, I do totally mix things. I mean, I do not play my hi-hat on the left side with the right hand, so I never cross hands. But, uh, but I wouldn't say you have to switch completely. It's more or less, even for somebody... Uh, who is trying to, to, to make his or her weak hand better, a, a, a pretty good idea to play open-handed. And you will also notice even your right hand is not able to do certain things while your left hand is. For instance, uh, right hand ghost notes usually always are not good. <laughs> so let's say um, it teaches you also more balance between the hands. For instance, another approach from volume one is the voice variation approach, switching hands in terms of switching the voices from hi-hat and snare. I'll give you an example first with, high, uh, with hands crossed. Check this out. If I were to play exactly the same pattern, pretty much, but switching the voices, the, this, actually, the same phrase sounds like this. I, I will start with hands crossed and then switch to open-handed and you'll easily see the benefits. Mm -hmm. 
what's really interesting to me is not only did it look smoother for you to kind of accomplish that playing it open-handed it, it it changed the groove you know and it changed it, it it changed the feel and I, I think it kind of swung a little harder you know when you went to the open-handed playing you know style it, it I, I think it really does so although I'm a right-handed person um, I, I, I really love open-handed playing because I've, I've at a certain point I understood it's a very essential part of the way uh, I sound like the way I sound. It, it's a part of my musical ID card, if you will. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't wouldn't sound like Klaus Hessler if uh, if, if I wouldn't play open-handed. So it, it has become my uh, my medium or or my vehicle to to transport my musical imagination in in a very different way um, as I did before. Let's uh, change subjects. You get into linear playing like a linear approach in the, in the books, right? Um, for those that maybe aren't familiar, can you explain what that means, what linear drumming is, is all about? Well, in a nutshell, it, it's pretty much, uh, say, playing one instrument at a time and, and never like playing two, diff two different instruments in unison. So it's, it's all like a, a, a chain of notes. Let's say something like this. So anything like that, you would notice, uh, uh, with the only exception of bass drum and crash cymbal, I actually never played two instruments at a time. And, uh, and I think especially in, uh, in, in modern funk, fusion, etc. styles, linear phrasing is a, a very vital part of that. Um, and, uh, and also it, uh, it, it is heavily inspired by the, by the linear masters like David Garibaldi, for instance, and... Uh, and, uh, and Gary Chafee, uh, I, I should mention. Still, there are a, a couple of, of more, say, um, uh, ingredients, to, uh, um, ingredients to, to linear phrasing, which, uh, which make it kind of interesting once you, once you have a different perspective on that. Say, for instance, if you look at a paradiddle um, on which you replace notes in a linear way, uh, it gives you a toolbox like this, for instance. So, uh, so coming up with these different building blocks that you can use to, uh, uh, to arrange your, uh, your own variations of linear open-handed playing, that's what finally makes it fun to do and not just reproducing a certain given line, but, but you're given building blocks, if you will. And, and on, the, on, the, uh, on the pages in the book, you actually just move around and, and you create your blocks no matter how you want them to be. And uh, the funny thing about the single paradiddle building blocks, for instance, in volume two is you can arrange them in any way you want and every, everything that comes out always sounds fun. There is, there is very little, if, if any, say, strange sounding examples at all. It's a, it's a, it's a pre-selected uh, thing which, uh, which never puts you in a wrong place. So I, I like it like that. It, you know, it sounds like a very musical approach. I mean, everything that you're playing, you know, really grooves and, 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 and is very musical rather than, than kind of uh, numeric, you know, and, 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 you know, scientific, you know, if, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So let me ask you, um, the second book, does that kind of pick up where the first one leaves off? So it gets into more advanced, you know, combinations and patterns? Um, well, I, I get this question quite a couple of times. Do I have to start with volume one before I go to volume two? But uh, actually, the answer is no. It's uh, it's just uh, the approaches are different. So uh, so volume two has the linear and the rudimental approach in here, and especially the rudimental approach 
takes you towards drum set applications of rudiments of which I think you don't find that with any other book. I mean, at least I haven't seen any of that in any other books and, and I have a lot of them. <laughs> and uh, open-handed playing volume one is traditional approach and this voice variation approach that I just, uh, uh, just demonstrated earlier. So you can start with, with any of these and, uh, and both come with play-alongs uh, with or without drums, with click, without click in different styles and musical uh, settings, let's say, to give you more options to, uh, to try out the, all this new vocabulary in a, in a real musical context, which I think is super important as opposed to staying on the numeric side of things and, and just combining stuff, which never ends up really being in a musical context then. And I will add that, you know, on the digital version that, that Hudson Music sells of your books, they're very easy because you just tap the icon to hear the audio track. You don't have to get a, C a CD out or you don't have to download files. It's right there on, on the screen. So it makes for such great, um, you know, it's, it's just easier to use. And that's why I, I really love the, um, the, the digital, uh, you know, application that we've created. Uh, I think it makes learning easier and, and you know, it, it, everything is right in front of you instead of having to go look for video files or audio files. So anyway, um, that's great. You know, maybe just uh, to take us out, how about if I can put you on the spot, give us, a, you know, a nice like minute or two of some grooves and fills to take us out. And uh, I'll say thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Uh, be safe. And uh, we're all in this thing together. And I know we'll all come out of it together. So uh, good luck in Germany and uh, take care of yourself, Klaus. <laughs> Thank you. You too. I, I just I just play a couple of stuff, a couple of things for you. Sounds good. Take care, man. <laughs> thanks again and we'll talk soon we do thank you so much check out the books stay safe everybody <laughs> thank you <laughs>